Hey folks, what's up? And welcome to Earhawks Minis. Today we're going to be digging into the October 2020 discovery box from Asset Drop. Also, we're going to have something a little bit extra at the end, so make sure you stick around to check that out as well. Alright, so we have another Asset Drop discovery box to open today. And like I said in the intro, uh, this time we're going to do something a little bit different. A viewer requested that I actually go through and do one of the tutorials included in the box. So if you're not familiar with Asset Drop, what it is is a subscription hobby stuff service. Every month you get this box, it comes with a painting guide showing you how to do stuff. It comes with the things to do that stuff, and it comes with things to do that stuff on. So, let's take a look at our book here and give you an idea of what we have in here. Um, it gives you a description of the things that are going to be in the book, or in the box, sorry. A tutorial on how to do specific things. Looks like this time we have some sort of painting bone tutorial. And we also have some sort of wet blending tutorial. Another great thing about Asset Drop is they give part of their proceeds to the Blue Marine Foundation, which is awesome. So let's open this up. And first off, we have our candy, as always. Uh, this time we have drumstick. Um, seems to be like a Laffy Taffy kind of stuff. And let's get this all out. Okay, so here's all our stuff for this month. These are the tutorial tiles on which we practice the tutorials. And included in this month, it looks like we have some P3 paints. Um, some pretty nice browns. We have Beast Hide, Jack Bone, and Minoth White Highlight. I don't have any P3 paints. This is uh, the first ones, so that's super cool. I know a lot of people like those paints. I have not tried them. Looking forward to giving them a go. And we have some Instar products. We have Electric Blue from the Alpha Range. We have Blush Pink from the Alpha Range. And we have this Extender Plus. Now what I've tried of the Instar paints um, so far, uh, because I'm always completely honest in these reviews and unboxings, I haven't really been into the paints that much. That said, I do have some of the other additives and the additives I've found quite useful and quite good. Paints, mm, not so much. Maybe I need to work with them more, to be fair. Um, I don't know. Uh, another thing we have here is Serious Play Ritual Tufts. These appear to be basing tufts. Um, we have some red, it looks like kind of flowers, sort of, and a thing. <laughs> I don't know what that is, it's fuzzy. Um, yeah, well, I guess we'll have to look in the book and see what this thing is all about. Let's open up the tiles and take a look at these. Now, these tiles are made by Micro Art Studio. If you know anything about these guys, you know their stuff is really good. The quality is great. They make some really cool bases. And they make these tutorial tiles for Asset Drop. So this obviously is going to be our one for painting bone. And this is going to be our wet blending. So let's take a look at what we're going to cover in the book. Our painting bone is um, painting bone. Um, this is just uh, going through different ways. Um, talking about some dry brushing, stippling, things like that in a way to get a nice looking bone color. And then they give you a little thing to go beyond uh, if you want to try to do like an OSL sort of thing. It gives you some tips on how to do that as well. Our wet blending is for the crystals tile and this is for using this extender plus with paints to extend the drying time. So it's basically, it's a retarder. Um, and this is going to go through uh, how to basically do wet blending. 
Um, I haven't, I have done some wet blending. I haven't done a lot of wet blending. Um, just mainly I, I paint orcs and there's not a ton of, you know, big spaces to do a lot of wet blending. Um, but this so it looks like it would be a good thing to try this on. Oh yeah, we'll go back and see if we can find out what this tuft thing is about. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't really say. It's, uh, it's just a thing, as you can see. Um, so anyway, this is what we have in this month's box. Um, it's a pretty cool assortment of stuff, as always. Um, if you're interested in getting your own subscription to Asset Drop, which I do recommend, um, there is a referral link in the description below that you can use to start your subscription. It won't cost you anything extra. Uh, what it will do is give me some points that I can use uh, to pick up some of the other boxes to show you guys. So stick around and I uh, will go through one of these tutorials and we will take a look at that in just a second. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna do one of these tutorials this time. Uh, we might make this an ongoing thing. I'm gonna do the skull tile. Um, this tutorial is about stippling and we're gonna use the provided P3 colors, Beast Hide, Jackbone, and Manoth White Highlight. So we're gonna do that real quick and we'll come back when that is finished. All right, so I've applied two layers of this base color on here. Um, I'm going to follow exactly what the book says. Um, if I was doing this on my own, at this point I would do a wash and of a darker color and reapply this base color again. But we're just gonna follow exactly what the book says just to see what the results are like. So our next thing that they want us to do is to mix in equal parts of the beast hide and the jackbone, our two darker colors here. And we're gonna start stippling that. Uh, we want to use a brush with kind of a nice point. Um, I'm going to use this uh, Isabe, Isabe, however you say it. It's a 6223 series, this is a Red Sable. Um, I really like these brushes um, because they do have a very nice point. They're, they last quite quite a long time and they're pretty cheap so if you can get a hold of these where you live um, check them out so we have our color mixed up here and what we're going to do with this is we're going to start stippling our first layer if you don't know what stippling is it's basically just making small dots with the point of our brush so what we want to do is we're going to cover about 90 percent of the area of this we're just basically going to be avoiding most of the recesses now when you do this, you do want a pretty nice tip on your brush. But you don't want to use a really expensive brush either because this can kind of wreck your brushes. And what we're basically doing is we're basically making a gradient using dots. It's going to look really, really weird at first, but that's okay. It will get better as we go on. Something else that you want to keep in mind when you're doing this is that when you get to an area that should be in shadow we're going to space our dots out uh, with more space between them whereas when we have an area like here uh, on this uh, eyebrow area uh, we can do our dots much more closely this is going to naturally make our darker color have more surface area here than it does up here on the top and this is something that, at the, especially at this point, um, you can be pretty sloppy with it. All right, so we've gone around with our first stipple color. And if you're trying this on your own, or if you're looking at mine and you're going, well, oh, wait a minute, Hox, this looks like ass, you'd be absolutely correct. It does look like ass. Um, this is an important thing to remember, not only with this technique, but with in minis in general, is that they almost always look worse before they get better and they will get better. It just, we have to go through the steps. So the next thing they want us to do is to just use our straight jack bone, but we're gonna thin it out with a little bit of water and this is gonna reduce the opacity a bit and give us a, a little bit more of a filter effect to kind of help us build this transition. Now in this step, we're really gonna start building up our highlight color. So when we do this part, we're going to want to focus this color onto 
the areas that would naturally be getting hit by the light and starting to avoid most of the areas that would be in shadow. And we're just going to do the same process basically, um, just stippling on. In this part we want to start getting our dots maybe a little bit smaller, but really in general it's it, the size of the dot isn't ultimately that important. It's more important that we have it in the highlight areas and avoiding the areas that would be more shaded. In addition to building up our colors, what this technique also allows us to do is to create a really nice texture. Another thing you can do, like I'm doing in this section here, is to vary the size of the dots that you apply. Obviously, if you make smaller dots, it's going to give you a thinner line and a more distinct part of the model. That's why I'm doing it along these cracks on here, just to emphasize uh, the difference between the shadow area and the part that sticks out. So our next step is basically going to be like a, a couple steps before. We're going to mix in our Minoth White highlight into the jackbone and add a little bit of water to reduce the transparency of that again and go around with another pass. This time we're going to only go onto the highlighted areas, the, high, the parts of the model that would receive the light and we're going to totally avoid the parts that would get shadow. Alright, so with our Menoth White mixed in, uh, we are continuing on doing our many, many dots. And like I said, we're just going to go onto the highlighted areas. We're going to totally avoid the downward facing parts of any of the model. Again, since we mixed in water with this to reduce our opacity, this is going to not only add some color but also act as sort of a filter and really aid in the transition between all three of these colors in building up these highlights. Right, the final stippling step in this book is to just use our straight Menoth White thinned down with a little bit of water. So I have that here and we are only going to place this on the very sharpest points we want to highlight the most. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we have built up quite a nice texture, pretty nice gradients, and this is the final step of the stippling in the book. What they want us to do next is to use an ink to shade in the shadow areas. Um, I'm going to use this uh, smoke. The other one's a little bit too red. You can use pretty much whatever you like for this. Um, you could use a sepia, you could use, actually you know what, instead I'm, I'm going to use this Army Painter Dark Tone, or Strong Tone. I think more people have this than have the smoke color. So we're just going to put a drop down in there and a drop of water. And what they want us to do in this part is to do a selective wash, or they're calling it a glaze, um, either way, it's kind of the same thing. And we're going to go heavy in the dark parts that should be dark, darkly shadowed areas, heavily shadowed areas, with this and fill this in. And if you get too much, as always, you can just wick it back out. And we're going to brush this into our shadow areas. Now I'm going to go kind of from the highlighted areas and pull my brush to the darker areas. And we can also use this to reinforce the cracks in the skull. Just to get some more contrast in there.
and we'll let that dry a second. With our wash glaze dried, um, you can see that it has brought out the shadows a little bit more. The last step uh, that they want you to do in the book here is to do a thinned out pure white just spot highlight on the highest most prominent parts things that you really really want to pop out now i personally wouldn't do a pure white i would just mix some white into the manoth white highlight color instead of going to a pure white Something that I would do to finish this off that they don't go over in the book is I would do an all over filter with something like Seraphim Sepia or any really any sort of sepia color uh, just to tie all of these layers together. So this was a really fun experiment to do. I, I really enjoyed doing this. If this is something that you think you might enjoy doing every month, you can use my referral code down in the description to start your own subscription to Asset Drop. Um, I highly recommend it. It's totally worth it. The value of goods you receive far exceeds the price you pay. Um, and it's cool to have uh, something new and maybe different from what you usually do to do every month as well as find out about all these great new products, things that you might not even know existed. That would be a really easy way to help out this channel a lot. Another actually free way you could help out this channel is to like and subscribe and do all of those things. And if you are so inclined, you could also use the Buy Me A Coffee link down in the description. So I will see you guys back next month for another unboxing video. In the meantime, you can check out one of these videos over here. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.